So we use the is set function and we say if is set dollar underscore post the first one to check is text. Then we use a logical operator and and say if is set dollar underscore post and search for. Remember we're just referencing the variables from here. And we use another and uh, logical operator to now search uh, or check, sorry, if the replace with is set. Okay, so now we need to check whether users have actually typed any data in. This line here will check, or this statement in here will check, whether the form has been submitted. If that evaluates to true, we can uh, start to check if the uh, data is empty or not. So, um, before we do that actually, we can actually create a shorthand way of using these variables and this must be done inside this if statement because if we try to create a variable first and these can't actually be found, we're going to end up getting an undefined index error. So, text equals dollar underscore post text. If you're unfamiliar with this uh, terminology here, if you go back and look at the post and get tutorials, you'll understand what we're actually doing here. We're taking data from the form and putting it into this uh, these uh, variables here. And then we want search equals dollar underscore post search for. Oh, it hasn't got an underscore in there. And then we want replace equals dollar underscore post and that is replace with so let's just echo these variables out to make sure that they uh, that everything's working up until now these will be with no spaces in between so if I just put one in there two in there and three in there that's a really good way to check uh, because if we click find and replace we can see that one two and three have both been submitted through We've checked for the form submission. If we click it and the form hasn't submitted, nothing happens. But if we do, we return this data. So let's get rid of that, that, and that. Now what we can do is check whether they have actually typed anything in. So if not, using the exclamation mark, empty, text, and not empty, search, and we use the last hand, not empty, replace, then do something. Otherwise, we want to say, please fill in all fields. All fields. So let's just type something here to check that this check is working. I'm just going to type OK with capital letters. Let's return to our index page and type uh, one in here and two in here, but not three in here, and let's see what happens. So you can see now we've got this error message that we've predefined. Let's fill in one, two again, and three again, and we'll see what happens here. And we return with OK. So we know at this stage that our form validation is working. So inside here, we can write the code that actually is actually going to process and return this. So let's create a bit of space in here for ourselves. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to predefine a variable up here called offset. And this is important with the substring function because we're once we find an instance of a word inside our string, the offset is where we're going to search from um, once we've found one. For example, we may have the cat sat on the cat. If we want to search for cat and replace it with, say, dog or monkey, as I used in my last example, it's going to it's going to find cat here, and it's going to make the replacement. Then it's going to need to start from after this and also replace the the last instance of it. And our while loop is going to help us ensure that. We only loop through this string until no more values have been found that have been specified here. So that's what's going to happen. Now let's do it. So 
let's create our while loop. Remember, a while loop always performs this check going into the loop as opposed to a do while loop, which will search for the condition at the end of the loop. So we need to say while substring, I'm just calling this, uh, giving this a func my, my um, variable name substring, while substring equals substring. So now we're making use of the function inside this while loop. Substring will return zero if it can't find anything. Therefore, this will evaluate to false. So we need to search inside text. And we are, um, in fact, I've completely messed this up because we're not actually using the substring function. I, I got a bit confused. So we're using um, the uh, strpos function. Um, obviously, the strpos function is going to return us the offset or the um, location of a specific string where it is. So strpos equals the function strpos. We're searching in text. We're searching for this search value. And we're going to give, we're going to specify the offset here. Now, because the offset originally starts um, at zero, we're searching from the start of this text variable, which equates to this text here. What we're then doing is searching for what we've specified in the form here. And then when it reaches, uh, let's say we were searching for cat inside the cat sat on the mat, when it reaches the word cat and finds it, this strpos variable here will be equal to the location. Then what we can do with the location is we can say, well, I want this plus the amount of characters in our search term. Let me just give you an example up here so we know what we're doing.